Hi, Gospel Guitars here with an introduction to mixers. So today I'm not going to go in depth with what all the knobs do, but just a quick um, briefing of, of what the unit does. Uh, this is going to be followed by all kinds of things that we'll be plugging into the mixer, going in and out of it. But today we'll discuss this component of the sound system. Uh, whether you do live audio or whether you do home recording, uh, you may need one of these. And so what do all these knobs do? The first thing people do is get afraid because they see so many knobs. And what I want to show you is that these are all organized and most of them just are duplicates. Um, the mixer has a channel section <coughs> which can vary in number. This specific Yamaha here that I use has 16 channels with the gray faders. And from here over are just your input channels. Okay, This side is your master section. Okay, Now, out of all these channels with all these knobs, it just looks mind-boggling. So what I want you to do is in your head just shut all this stuff out and just picture one channel strip. Okay, now I'm going Now at the top we have a line input for an XLR. This is where you would connect your snake going to the stage or in the studio would just plug in a microphone or a DI box. But basically it's a microphone cord that goes, plugs in here. Here you have a line input for a quarter inch for like guitars in your home studio. Um, and underneath this you have what's called an insert. And this is where you insert things that you're going to need on that channel, be uh, uh, compressors or some type of EQ or effect device. And it would only be used with this channel, not all of those. We can get into those later. Okay. Next section on the mixer, we have a gain control. And this controls how much gain your input has of whatever's plugged in up here on your mic or line, line, line feeds. Now this particular mixer also has a built-in compressor on six of the 16 channels. So this one here is just a single knob compressor. It's nothing fancy, but it just kind of kind of helps with what this board does. The other thing you have on just about every board is an 80 hertz roll-off switch, which engaged will kill the low rumble frequencies on stage of the kick drums and things like that that are going on. And it'll just clean up your signal if you get that low end rumble a lot. Okay, next on the line, moving down, we have a high frequency control with a peak indicator. It's a red LED, so if you're getting too hot of a signal coming into your channel, this will flash. It's okay if it flashes intermittently, but don't let it stay lit or really lit. Um, so there's your high frequencies. Below that, we on this board and any board that's worth its money, you're going to have a sweepable mid-band EQ. So on this board, I have one control to uh, it'll increase or decrease the amount of EQ and this one selects what frequency. Below that you have the low frequency. So basically this whole EQ section is like a something it's just a think of it as a sophisticated stereo. In the old days you had just bass and treble. Um, now you have bass, treble, and sweepable mids. This is also referred to as a parametric mid which allows you to select the mid frequency and then cut or boost it. And that comes in handy with feedback and just annoying room frequencies. If you have a frequency that's just really annoying you, you can find it in here, turn it all the way up until you find that annoying sound and then just zip it right back out by lowering this uh, knob here. You can cancel that annoying feedback or just uh, something bad in the room that you're hearing. Okay, below my EQ section on this board, I have auxiliary section. And this can vary on some boards as well. 
but the layout on all boards is basically the same. On this board I have an AUX1 and I have an auxiliary 2. Okay, and also with this you'll usually find a switch that allows you to assign the AUX send to pre or post fader. Okay. Usually we use AUX1 to send to our monitors on stage or your headphones in the studio. And then AUX2 you can use for outboard effects. Okay, next on the chain we have a effect knob. And uh, not all boards have this, but most of the boards coming out today have some type of effects built into them. They don't all come that way, but those that do have this knob located somewhere on your channel usually at the bottom and uh, this just controls how much of the signal in this channel is going to go to the built-in effects unit whatever that effect might, might be reverb on a vocal so if you put it way up here you're going to get a pretty wet reverb and if you turn it down it's going to be a drier but it's not as dry as if it's totally off right below this knob you have your pan so you can have a stereo sound you're just going to pan left or pan right and on these are also for assigning to buses and we'll get into buses later okay the last section on most of the boards <laughs> not most all the boards uh, you usually have some type of on and off switch that will on this one it illuminates um, some of them have just a, a normal push button and might have an LED next to them, but it, there's some kind of on and off or a mute. They, they're both the same thing. If it's on, obviously it's not muted. If it's off, then it's muted. The PFL stands for pre-fader listen. So the signal that's come all the way through this chain that I've just showed you, when you push this button, you can hear what that sounds like privately through the headphones plugged into the board. So that way you can figure out which channel might give, be giving you feedback from the stage because you'll hear it right here. Below this you have your bus assign switches and on this board I have one and two, three and four, and stereo. And each of these have their own faders in the main section which we'll see in a few minutes. And then you have your main channel volume. Now this controls how loud this channel is going to your stereo bus. Okay, your stereo bus is what you're listening to on stage coming off the big speakers. That's your stereo bus. And this just controls how much of this instrument or vocal is in that signal. And that's what these do, all these faders. So that's basically it for the whole channel strip. Okay, so now we move over from the channel sections to the master section. And here we have a master send for your auxiliary one, auxiliary two, and your built-in effects. These knobs control how hot, they're, they're just your master control. So they control the overall level of each of these sections. Over here you have your return for aux one, aux two, and your stereo bus. And this again, these are like they're just volume controls, and this is panning um, how much goes to your stereo bus because you don't have to send these things there. <laughs> um, next to that, over here, we have our headphone and monitoring section with a volume control and a couple switches. Uh, we can select the stereo group. Uh, stereo is your main stereo bus and then your, your groups are your subgroups and then this switch will designate which of the subgroups you want to mess with either one and two or three and four they're always paired up in one two three four five six seven eight however many you have usually you're not going to get more than eight below that we have our yeah, check that see if you can even see it And you can. <laughs> okay. Below that we have our the two T R N. So that's an input up in this other section I'll show you in a minute, where you can plug in your two track 
uh, playback decks for background music and things like that during music breaks. You know, a band takes a break, you can throw something on. And this can control that volume. And this is a switch that, it, that uh, you can select to send it to stereo or your monitors. So that's what it means by master. This controls where everything plugged into the board is routed to. And finally, we come down to the master fader section where we have your effects group. This is just going to control how loud your effects are. And then you got subgroup one and group two with a stereo assigned switches. Because if you have these in, then whatever groups these are, like this might be a group of singers, um, and this may be a drum kit or whatever. Uh, but you don't have to send them to the to the drums. Uh, I mean, to the, uh, to the to the drums to the stereo out, because they could be used for recording. But these are your master faders. Now, at the top of the board, on the other half, you have the master input section and output section. Um, here are your tip sleeves for your input for your playback MP3 player or CD player or even the uh, sound coming off of a uh, DVD player. You have a record out which you can take out and send it to your recording device, whatever that might be. You have your auxiliary sends, one, two, and then you have an effect send on this board. Um, so you have your auxiliary send section. Right below that, you have your auxiliary return section. You have your group outs. I have four, which are the outputs of the faders that you've just seen. And then over here, we have a couple choices for outputs. We have headphones. We have um, tip ring sleeves, a quarter inch for your monitor outputs. And then you got your left and right LXRs that would lead to the stage. Um, as well uh, as quarter so you got your choice of outputs here so you can send things all over the place but at least this way you get a brief overview of what what's going in and where they plug in and last but not least we have our monitor LEDs which tell us our power is on and what the level of the system is and you have a switch also that turns on your phantom power to your microphones if they need that. Um, these also show your bus on this one. I have uh, left is one and three for your subgroups and right is two and four for your subgroups. So you can use your, your, pan, your panning knob on each channel to send it to one or two, which is left or right respectively. Okay, so that's a real quick video on what all the knobs do on these boards. Just take it one section at a time and learn one strip and what it does according to the manual for your board. Now, what I've told you on this board is pretty much applicable to anything that's out there. You're either going to have more channels and more buses or less channels and less buses. You may have effects built in, you may not have effects built in. Uh, if you plan on doing anything live with your board or in the studio, make sure it does have 48 volt phantom power. Um, and if you are going live, as you can see, this is in a case. There is a big top that goes on this, and I recommend that you own one of these cases to uh, protect the board. It's your own investment, so you may as well protect it. Um, plan on forking out about 300 bucks, though. So I hope the video helps you on your way to learning about audio, whether you're wanting to do it in your home or whether you want to do it live. And I do both, so <laughs> I will have forthcoming videos on how to use at least the gear that I own. I own just about every type, so I'm going to be doing one piece after another in this series. And I hope that it helps us all learn about the audio systems in our churches and um, that in our bands so that we can actually sound good with whatever it is that we're doing from the music side of the of the church service to the sermon side so i hope this helps you leave comments questions um, i don't know everything about every single board okay <laughs> 
So it's pretty generic uh, in, this, in this lesson. I hope that you found it helpful. And thanks for viewing, and be sure to share it with your friends. Click the button and subscribe for further updates on more videos coming. Thanks for watching. <laughs>